Today, dear chess kids, I'm going to ask you to ignore your opponent. You're not going to hear me say that often, but there are going to be some special times in chess where you can look danger in the face and just laugh. <laughs> what do I mean by that? Well, I'm going to get to that. Hit the subscribe button and then we get to have some fun. Okay, so this is actually a game I played when I was a teenager or maybe I was just before teenager, but we didn't have the term tween back then. So I'm just going to say I was a teenager and um, I'm worse. I'm black. I'm losing. And I decided to shake up the apple part and play the move knight takes e4 which was a great practical decision because there's actually some ways for white what? to go wrong in this position my opponent was probably afraid of taking this knight and i can play f3 and i'm still losing but white has to play really accurately in order to be able to hold on to the advantage so what do i mean by staring danger in the face well i noticed after knight takes that it's very possible plausible, probable that my opponent would see the opening of this diagonal and I have no light squared bishop and my opponent does. My opponent also has a queen that can move to light squares and I thought, you know what? Hmm. My opponent might put the queen on c2 because it just looks great, doesn't it? To line up the queen with my knight and my king and my opponent did exactly that. My opponent played queen c2 and guess what? White is no longer winning. I can actually allow all of the bad things to happen to me on this diagonal and I can live to tell the tale. Sometimes you simply have to ignore the threat. And oh yeah, I've got a video on chess kid about that exact same subject, but this is a little bit more complicated. Okay, now, what did I do? I played knight to g3, and I know what you're saying. But Master Mike, but Master Mike, what about the discovered attacks with this knight? Yeah, but what are the good discovered attacks? Let's take a look. Well, if the knight goes backward or to the right, you know, knight e1, knight f2, it's just check. I can just get out of check. The knight's not bothering me at all. The scary moves look like the knight taking one of my two pawns. However, no matter which pawn is captured here, I have a good response. For example, if knight takes f4 discovered check, it's true that I better not move my king. Because if I move my king, then there's a rook, there's a knight, there's a queen, all bearing down on my king, I will be in trouble. However, I have this move pawn to e4, and now it's actually white that's in trouble. The knight is hanging, the rook is in danger, I've got some pressure on the bishop, and this bishop is suddenly clear to get to the d4 square. In fact, it is white who has to play perfect chess just to survive this position. So we need to go back. What about the move knight takes e5? Well, in that case, I can actually play my knight on h to the square f5. And again, there are major problems in white's position. This knight is hanging. If this knight decides to capture, then the bishop will be hanging. Notice my queen and my knight would both be lined up. This bishop, of course, can get to d4 when this knight moves. The rook is still hanging. My queen can get to g5 and pressure this g2 pawn and the king. And yeah, black is actually winning this position. So amazingly, even though things look really bad in this position, black is actually totally fine. In fact, I went on to win really quickly. My opponent played rook h3. I played e4 anyway to clear out my bishop. And after the knight moved back, my bishop dove in the position and I actually went on to win in not that many more moves. Now, let's take a look at a much more recent example when I was not a teenager or a tweenager. I actually played this on my live show recently. What's that? You're not watching Beat Fun Master Mike? Well, you should because you have a legitimate chance to beat the old man. Here, there's two attackers on my knight and I played queen to d3. And I found myself in a world of trouble after bishop to f5. Oh no, my queen is lined up with the bishop. Any knight move is going to be a discovered attack on my queen. And here, I sort of ignored the threat <laughs> twice. I am worse here, but I played the absolute best way out of a yucky position. I played knight h4. Now if this knight moves, I have a double attack on the bishop. Now I noticed my opponent could play knight takes knight, mm. discovered attack on my queen, and then threaten a discovered attack on my king. But I also analyzed that after I take, and the queen straight, which by the way, this Ow. did happen, that even though it looks incredibly scary, the attack on my king, I can ignore the threat because this knight has no great discovered attacks. Knight takes bishop, I just play king takes, no big deal. It might look to you that black can win a pole and knight takes a2, but then if my king just moves sideways, uh-oh, now the knight has self-trapped 
himself. Yeah, I'm just gonna win the knight thanks to black putting it on a terrible square. In the game, my opponent played knight to d5 check and I just hid my king over on this square. My opponent even made a trade and I was totally fine. The game is equal. I survived. I got my king to f2. I got my rooks in the game and I actually went on to win. So there you go, chess kids. I'm not really telling you to ignore what your opponent does to you, but there's a select few times in chess where it looks really dangerous and you just have to lean into the danger and say, okay, it might look bad, but it's not.